everyone. Happy Christmas to you. And how nice that you could come and share this Christmas morning with us. We're going to be telling the whole story of how Jesus came to be born on this day. And Yes, absolutely. Okay, and we'll keep, we'll keep talking about it. <laughs> Our main audience happens to be in the front row, so you'll have to forgive me if, <laughs> if some of you feel a little left out. We'll try to include you from time to time. <laughs> we have here this mysterious mountain, which seems to just be empty at this point. But sometimes, before you can see things physically, they're already there vibrating with light. And then the more that we concentrate, and the more that we pray, and the more we open our hearts, sometimes what is just vibrating with light and we can't see it, suddenly turns into something that you can see and you can touch. And that's the incredible magic of Christmas, is that so many things that we don't notice the rest of the year, we start noticing. So we're going to go through the whole story of Jesus, talk about all the things that happened, and see if we can turn some of this light into something that we can all see. So today, Christmas Day, is the birthday of Jesus, and thousands and millions of people around the world celebrate his birthday. Even though he left this world hundreds of years ago, he was such a wonderful person and loved by so many that people still celebrate his birthday. And whenever you have a birthday party, and I'm sure all of you know that and all of us know it too, your birthday is the day you get to do it exactly the way you want it. Doesn't matter what daddy's favorite cake is or your brother's favorite cake, you get to have yours, right? So on Jesus' birthday, we have to celebrate in a way that makes him happy. And what Jesus likes above all is that when we love each other the way he loved us and the way he loves us all, and that we love God the way he loves God. So his, his birthday party starts with a prayer. And a prayer is just like when you all came in today, we all said hello to each other, didn't we? Hello, I'm so glad to see you. It's so nice that you're here. Happy Christmas. So the spirit of Jesus and the other masters is always around us. And they are always wanting us to talk to them. But often we're so busy, we don't notice. So when we pray, it's when we stop and we remind ourselves and we speak to Jesus and to the angels that we're here and we want to listen. So let us start with a prayer. And we, when you greet someone, you say their name, don't you? Hello, Mary. Hello, Helen. Hello, Tricia. You say what you really want to say. So when we're praying to God, we speak to God in all the ways that he lives for us. And we say the, pick the names of the masters on the altar, and especially today, because it's Jesus' birthday, we really pray to him. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, dearest friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Mahashaya, Swami Sri Yukteswar, Beloved Guru Paramhansa Yogananda, Saints of every religion, Dear friend Swami Kriyananda, we, we, we greet you all in the spirit of Christmas with great joy to be here at your party. Come into our hearts and help us to feel your love. Om. Oh,
peace. Amen. Now, Jesus was born 2,000 years ago, 20 centuries ago. It was a really long time ago. But the odd thing about time and the odd thing about thinking about the past is really not so different than now. It just, everything is always the same. And people were pretty much the same then too. And they had happy hearts and sad hearts. And sometimes they behaved well and sometimes they behaved badly. Sometimes they refused to admit that they'd done things wrong. And sometimes they were very humble when they realized their mistakes. And all the way through, throughout all of history forever, we've never been alone. Even though it feels like we're alone sometimes, but there are all these forms of light that are actually angels and masters and Jesus himself who are all right close to us all the time. And, he's, and they're always watching, and they're always trying to think of ways to help. For those of you who are still small and under the care of your mommies, you know you, your mommy is always trying to think about how she can help you, isn't she? Are you hungry? Are you cold? Do you need something? And just the way that your mommy takes care of you, that's why we say, Divine Mother. Just the way the Father takes care of you. That's why we say, Heavenly Father. They're always there taking care of us. And at the time that Jesus was born, there was a lot of trouble in the world. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? Hmm. There was a lot of trouble in the world. And so God decided that we needed some great big being of light to come into the world to help remind people of why we were here. And so this plan started like this. And if there's going to be somebody born into the world, there has to be a mommy. So there was a mommy, and her name was Mary. And she was a very, very good person. And she was such a good person that even when she was very small, not much bigger than you girls at all, her mother, who was named Anna, knew that Mary didn't want to live an ordinary life. Mary wanted to dedicate her life to loving God, to loving people, to serving the world. So the school she went to was a school where you train and learn how to sing and how to dance and how to be, uh, how to be a very loving person in the world. So the first person in our story is Mary. So let's have our singers come up here. And Mary, who had a wonderful heart, used to go through the world singing this song called All the World is My Friend. And those of you who know it, please sing along with Mary. Okay. to think about having a husband and getting married. It wasn't in those times, especially for someone like Mary, it wasn't that she just went out and tried to find her own husband. She went, the priests 
in the temple school where Mary was living, um, decided that they would hold a great ceremony to ask God who was the one who was, uh, who was an, going to be appropriate to be the husband of a woman like Mary. And uh, what hap one of the stories that's told is every man who thought he might be suitable, who felt called from God that maybe this was his responsibility, each of them brought a branch into the temple and it was placed on the altar and then the temple curtains were closed and then they waited until the morning. And when they went in the next morning and opened the curtains, all the branches looked just the same except one. One had been put in there just as a bare branch and now it was covered with white flowers. And that branch had been placed there by a man named Joseph. And everybody saw it and knew that Joseph was the intended one for Mary. And Joseph, too, had devoted his life to asking God, how can I love and how can I serve? And Joseph was dedicated to the divine as it expressed in perfect light. And so here's the song that Joseph would sing. And if you sing with us, we can sing this song in parts, too. OK? We'll all sing it together just to learn the words. Give me a light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. Give me a light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. This half of the room with me. Give me a light to light my way. Give me a light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. Give me the light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. Give me the light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. Give me the light to light my way. Truth is the light, so wise men say. So now, Mary and Joseph are there, and they are wondering now how God wants them to serve. And both of them prayed very, very deeply, so deeply that the angel Gabriel heard their prayers and came himself to tell Mary what her life was going to be. To Mary there came an angel of light who announced the will of the Lord. Her purity blessed mankind with Sandeep, why don't you all come and sit up in the front row here, where all the ch other rest of the children are. Maitri, Maitri, come and sit in the front. Thank you. And then when the angel was standing with Mary, he sang to her this way.
So now, because of the words of the angel, Mary and Joseph knew that their destiny now was to be the parents of this extraordinary little baby who was going to be born small, as all of us are born small, but was going to grow to be as big as the whole universe because his heart and his love was so big like that. So Mary and Joseph, Mary felt the little baby growing in her tummy as babies do, and they were so uh, excited, uh, uplifted about what was going to happen. And Mary's mother, Anna, who was also a very spiritual person, they were all planning for this glorious birth. And he, then what happened was the king of the country, King Herod, and kings are very powerful. Presidents and prime ministers have power but kings have real power. And he said, I think a lot of people are not paying their taxes, and I want their money. And the reason they're not paying their taxes is because I don't know how many of them there are. I don't have their names. But if everybody has to write down their name, then I can find them and make sure I get my money. Herod was not a good man. So the way they had to do it then was everybody had to be in the town where they, from which, where they were born. No matter where they lived, they had to go back to where they were born, where the records were, and then they had to sign their name or the king's men would come after you. Now they were living in, in one town, but Joseph, and they did it by who the father was, Joseph's town was Bethlehem. And it was winter, and Mary was very close to the time when the baby had to be born, and they could only travel on foot or by donkeys, but it didn't matter, they had to do it. So right when everything was about to happen in such a perfect way, everything changed. Has that ever happened to any of you? Hmm. You have your own plan, and then all of a sudden God says, guess what? I have a different one. And so Joseph and Mary had to leave their home and travel to Bethlehem. See, the angel is still watching and waiting. And you might have noticed when Joseph and Mary were leaving that there were also angels going with them. 
And we have to remember that even if we don't see them, even if we're convinced that this time they're not with us, we're always wrong. The angels never, ever leave us alone, and they never give up. So now, Joseph and Mary arrive at the town where he was born, Bethlehem. So why don't we sing them in? Do we have words that we can put on the wall? OK, good. So here we come, arriving to Bethlehem. in the city. This was Joseph's home city. But of course, everybody in the country was moving around. And Joseph and Mary just thought, well, I know people here. I have family here. We'll just go and stay somewhere. <clears throat> but it turned out that every place was full. And there was simply no place for them to be. Now, Mary is very, very great with child. And that her time for birth is coming. And finally, they knock on the door of an inn. And the man says, oh, I'm so sorry. There's no rooms inside. But there is a stable, which was made in a big cave. And it's, it's dry, and you'll be out of the weather. It's where the animals live. But it's the only thing that I can offer you. So Mary and Joseph were so happy to be somewhere. And the animals were very happy to have company. <laughs> and they settled in. And as they were there and as the midnight hour approached, they say Jesus was born in the middle of the night. And in the midnight hour, it became very, very still. Then they heard the sounds of the angels singing, and the angels were bringing Jesus to Joseph and Mary. Now, those of you who are still living with your parents and have this question, ask your parents about the angels who came when you were born. Even if you couldn't quite see them, I bet every one of your mothers and your fathers and your grandparents and your aunts and your uncles know for a fact that you were delivered by angels. So that's a story you can talk to them about later on this Christmas day. And for now, the angels are bringing Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and it 
nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love now in mary's home where her mother had been there they had everything planned beautiful things for the coming baby but here they were in a stable and the only place for the baby to be put in was this little box, which is called a manger. And the reason it's filled with hay is because when the donkey and the cow were hungry, they would come over and they would eat the hay. But you know, when you look at it, there it is. It's kind of a little cradle, isn't it? And the hay is very soft. And sometimes we think that everything has to be fancy and expensive and different. But sometimes it's much better just to think, what do I really need? What do I really need? And how simply and gratefully can I live? So Jesus was born and placed. No, the angel should put him in. <laughs> in the manger. So because there is so much for us to learn about this song we sing to the manger too. This is something, especially on Christmas Day, that we have to really ask ourselves. You know, what is it that's the most important thing to us? All of us, big people and little people, we get confused, don't we? Because everybody around us is telling us, you need this, you have to have that, you won't be happy unless you do this, you're not a good person unless you have that. But Christmas, and really every day, we have to stop, pull into our hearts, and not think about, what do I want that I don't have? But all that I've been given, and how grateful I am for all of that. So we place Jesus in the manger, the angels are here, the animals are watching, and then we sing to the little baby asleep in the manger.
So now here we are in the middle of the night. Joseph and Mary and Jesus are here, but nobody but the angels knows that they're here. So this, the birth of Jesus, is very, very good news. So the angels take it upon themselves to start telling the world that they're here. And the first people they talk to are a group of shepherds. And the shepherds live outside much of the time because they have to move their flocks around. They sleep looking up at the stars. And so they're much more accustomed to listening than those of us who are always watching television and listening to our devices and looking at our tablets. We can't hear the angels quite so clearly. So the angels came, and the shepherds were sound asleep because it was the middle of the night. So the first thing the shepherds said to them was, wake up. When in Bethlehem Jesus was born, the angels did herald the news to shepherds that slept upon a wintry field. They sang awake in the Lord. At first, the shepherds were really scared. Can you imagine? You've been sleeping out on the ground with your fox for years and years, and all of a sudden, a voice comes from the sky and says to you, wake up. Yeah, yeah you can imagine. And then there were more and more angels, and the shepherds just didn't know what to think. But they thought, we have to respond. And then they saw a star in the sky. It looked a lot like that star. And so they began to follow it. We have to go see what the angels have told us about. And so they found their way to the manger. And let's sing as the shepherds make their way to the manger.
it looks like one of the sheep got lost, and Mother is really worried about it. Here we are. There. OK. Now they're all in place. Now you can see it's very humble folk. The first people who found out about Jesus were the humble folk. The people who lived simply, who had pure and happy hearts, those were the ones who heard the angels first. But this great birth of this great teacher who was going to have such an effect on our lives was also known by very wise sages who lived in monasteries and caves, high in the mountains, far away from everyone. And they too saw the star, but they understood that the star that they were seeing was the inner light that was coming from this baby Jesus. So they took a very long journey to be here to bow at the feet and bring presents to the baby Jesus. And these are the three kings, and they were kings in the world, but they were kings in the inner world also. And it was because of their divine wisdom that they knew. Now we have a wonderful song that we always sing to commemorate the three kings coming to see the baby Jesus. Please sing along. Still proceeding, 
God and sacrifice. Alleluia, alleluia, sounds through the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still. See what's happened here? Remember we started? There was just this blue mountain. And now all the light that was here that we could barely see has now come into these forms, isn't it? Here are the shepherds, here are the animals. Here's the baby Jesus. It was always there, but now we can see it so much more clearly, can't we? And everyone who comes to the baby Jesus, when you come to someone that you really love, doesn't it make you happy? And don't you want to give them things? You want to say nice things to them? And this is on a birthday. You know, we, we go out and we get something, and we wrap it up, and we bring it pretty like this. Well, Jesus doesn't live in a physical body anymore. He's spirit. He's light. But that doesn't mean there's nothing that we can give him. But we have to give him what he can receive and what he can use. If you give him a book or a new hat or something, it's a little hard for him to use. But he's going around the whole world, loving the world and spreading light. And where does he get that light? Well, one of the places he gets that light and that love is because we give it to him. So now, what I want us to do, we're going to sing one more song together. The song is the beautiful song, Silent Night. And I want us to be like, I can do something for you. I can sing a beautiful song for you. And I will put into that song all my gratitude for all the beautiful things you've given to me. And I will also put into that song my promise to do my best to live in this world as you would want me to live and to listen in my heart to your guiding me into the light. So let's now sing Silent Night together.
friends, I bet some of you would like to come closer, just like you would at a birthday party, to go close to the birthday person and tell them how happy you are to be there. And one of the ways that we want you to be able to express your enthusiasm for the Holy Family is we have these baskets of rose petals. And I think the animals would like to be blessed. I know baby Jesus would like to be blessed. And as they shower down upon them, can you hear the angels singing while it comes down? And so we have baskets and baskets of rose petals for you. And it seems that we have some angels in the audience, too. <laughs> Could you light the tumor? Who would like to also bless you with the light of Jesus. So if we, if we stand on either side, and here, come to the angel, angels for a blessing. And then we'll have baskets of rose petals. And you can spend as much time as you like burying our holy family and their visitors in rose petals while our singers continue to bless us. OK. Hearts to love us with. 
Look what we have created. Doesn't it just perfectly, all of the love and the gratitude and the happiness that we all feel, look what we did. Just all by ourselves with our own hearts. This is the way our lives should always be. So now, the birthday party's coming to an end, although the children can stay and play longer if they want to. <laughs> but, but we need to say goodbye to the birthday child, so for just a moment, you have to pay attention to me. You can pick up rose petals in just a moment <laughs> and throw them everywhere you want. So we have to say now goodbye as we said hello. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, dearest friend, beloved God, great masters, beloved Jesus, we are so grateful that you have come into our lives. Help us to keep our hearts open and our ears open so that we will hear your voice and the songs of the angels and walk where they lead. Oh, peace. Amen. And happy Christmas to all of you. And if you don't feel that you've visited with the Holy Family enough or you see a square inch that needs rose petals, <laughs> feel free. God bless you all and happy Christmas. <laughs> we can keep recycling or we can <laughs> take what we want. <laughs>